I'm in way too good of a mood for this video. Hello, and welcome to, or back to, my channel. I'm Kit, and today, Taylor Alicia thinks feminism ruined dating. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know Taylor, and these are my thoughts and opinions on the content she puts out for public consumption. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video, and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below, along with sources and resources. And now, on to the reason we're all here. Taylor Alicia is a former OF model turned professional Christian. She had over 2 million subscribers on her original channel, but 5 months ago she started The Bible Chick, and as of filming, her new channel has over 70,000 subscribers. And in addition to posting about general Bible stuff, she asks questions like, do men prefer modesty? And educates her audience about things like the war on the nuclear family. For some reason, I didn't think she was all that bad until this. Today we see God says marriage should be between a man and a woman. And Satan says, well, why can't it be between two men or two women? What a peach. But today we're going to look at Taylor's most popular video, Feminism Ruined Dating. The way she structured her video didn't make much sense to me, so we're basically going to go through it backwards, but as always, the original will be linked below. First, we should probably find out what Taylor thinks has been ruined about dating. Here is where I think we're at with modern dating, suffering the hand of the feminist movement. Men are are afraid of women. Men are afraid to hold the door for women. Men are afraid to even approach a woman. Rightfully so, because they are in fear that they're going to be verbally attacked, or even worse, that women will film them and post them on TikTok or any other social media app. I again must call on my 18% male audience. Are you afraid of women? I don't know where Taylor is getting this from, though I have a feeling it's TikTok, but so far, I at least haven't noticed what she's talking about. People are still holding doors, and honestly, you should be careful about approaching strangers, and neither has anything to do with feminism. It's just being respectful of other people. Taylor also mentions women filming men looking at them in the gym, and that's also not feminism. That's both being disrespectful of others, please don't film in public gyms, and trying to outrage farm for engagement. Taylor bemoans that she doesn't know how we got here, and that's apparently her issue with dating. Men are afraid of women. Let's see what feminism has to do with that. After this disclaimer. Chivalry is dead, and women killed it. Do I think that that was the intention of the creators and the founders that pushed the feminist movement? No, I honestly don't. I think the intentions were good and I obviously stand with women's rights and women having the equality and freedom to do what men do, but unfortunately that's not what this movement has become. So to be clear, men get equality and freedom by default, but when women seek it, it's doing what men do? Okay. And if you're wondering what Taylor thinks feminism has become, I am all for equal rights, but I will not stand with a movement that is so clearly a war against men and a war against God. A movement that stands for the opposite of everything that God created and the way he created for it to be and to flourish. Taylor was never going to be okay with feminism because it's not about following God's will. It's also not a war against men, but minor detail. Honestly, I really don't think Taylor knows all that much about feminism. And I'm not just basing that off the random things she attributes to it. She also gives us a history and it's... Yeah. This all started in the 60s when the feminist movement grew rapidly when a woman gained the right to remove a baby from her body if she didn't want the baby. Once this was passed, sex outside marriage became popular and casual sex became socially acceptable. As you can see how much of an effect this day in history had on all of us. On top of the fact that around the same time as this, birth control also became available. Now because women are so involved in casual sex, this has made it so much harder for women that are actually looking for marriage. A very large percentage of men are only looking for casual sex. Why would a man even want to get married when he knows he can just have casual sex, especially when it's never been easier to get? We are living in a world where sex has no value, and we are all so numb to it to the point where we watch people have casual sex on our TV screens, in our living rooms, with our family. I think she's getting history confused. Feminism and the sexual revolution are not one and the same, they aren't interchangeable, and they're both still ongoing. And legally speaking, the pill came first. It was legalized for married women in 1965 and legalized for single women in 1972. Abortion was legalized in 1973. And I would like to note that neither are new. Birth control and abortion have always existed. People have always wanted to control their fertility. And so has premarital sex, casual sex, whatever you want to call it. There has never been a period of time where sex was had only within marriage. But anyway, 
This all boils down to sex. Taylor thinks birth control and abortion means men are less interested in marriage because now sex can, theoretically, be had without consequences, aka kids, and that is men's main interest. And thus, women who want to marry have a harder time of it because men just want sex and if you won't give it to them, they'll find someone who will instead of proposing. Classically, Abby made this video a few years ago and my response remains the same. How low is your opinion of men and if you're waiting for marriage, wouldn't you want to find someone who is as well? Because that's a value you share, not because society tells them they have to? Anyway. We basically all have porn in our living rooms and Hollywood loves to show you two people that are not married having sex together within 24 hours of meeting. And this does follow its way back to the root of the problem, which is feminism, which was created by the feminist movement that gave women the right to remove a baby and the right to stop a baby from even being formed in the first place. I don't quite understand what she's saying here. Is she suggesting that sex outside marriage, birth control, abortion were created by feminists? Also, and the right to stop a baby from even being formed in the first place, is it just me or does it sound as though she doesn't think people should try to prevent conception? I'm going to refrain from speculating, though the temptation is strong, and move on to the second reason. The second way that the feminist movement has affected modern dating is a huge one for me, which is gender roles. Like I said before, I don't know if this was the intention of the feminist movement in the beginning, but here we are. The world we are living in today pushes men down and lifts women up. Women are the boss babe, they are the leader of the house, then men are portrayed as weak, and many movies even portray men as the stay-at-home dad. That is amazing. Many movies even portray men as stay-at-home dads. Can you believe how men are being put down? They're being portrayed as women. I don't think she realizes how this sounds. If you think women being stay-at-home mothers is okay, but it's an insult for men to be stay-at-home fathers, you should sit with yourself for a bit. Have a little chat. Hollywood looks to make the- Hollywood isn't feminism and I'm sure we can all guess where this is going. Hollywood is trying to make men more feminine and women more masculine in every way and this is bad because- And I'm sorry, but this is a major turn off for me. I want a man. I want a man that is going to protect me, lead me, and care for me. I want to be led by the husband that God has for me. And I don't want to feel like I have to try to take that role over because it isn't being filled. There is nothing more attractive to me than when a man is being being a man, doing manly things. And guess what? I'm not the only one. So many women are wanting this because we are designed to want this. I do not like this. Don't try to pressure people to stay in their gender box because it's what you find attractive. If what Taylor wants is a manly man doing manly things, we all have our preferences and I'm sure she'll find one. But people aren't obligated to live their lives to be attractive to others and every man and every woman not falling in line with their gender role, that's not a sign of societal decay or Hollywood brainwashing. That doesn't mean Satan is winning, people being allowed to be themselves is a good thing. And how entitled can you be if you think, this is my preference, therefore men should fall in line? But we'll get to that in a bit. Taylor goes on a rant about how true godly women are desiring men and sure, Jesus was gentle, but he also flipped tables and Satan. Society wants men to be weak. And if your eyes are open to the wickedness that's going on in the music industry and in Hollywood, you will clearly see how the devil has not changed. In the Bible, we see that God says you can eat from anywhere in this garden. Just don't eat from that one tree or you will surely die. Then Satan comes and says, can it really be that God had said you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? He twists what God meant for good and the gifts that he gave us and the order and design that he gave us those gifts in. The order and design that works, that we are the happiest in. Today we see God says marriage should be between a man and a woman. And Satan says, well, why can't it be between two men or two women? And God says that we're supposed to respect husbands as the head of the household. And Satan says, well, why can't women be the head of the household? Because God didn't create it that way. And when you do things that are out of God's design and out of the order that we're supposed to live, things fall apart and we get hurt. What Taylor doesn't seem to understand is that those are her beliefs. She's free to have them to practice them, and others not living according to what she believes to be God's will doesn't mean we are bad, led by Satan, and so on. Random rant aside, we are finally at the third reason. Okay, here is my third reason of why I believe feminism has ruined modern dating. Prior to feminism, we had a wife at home cooking, cleaning, caring for the kids, raising up the kids, raising up the family, making sure everything was in order. That was her role, and that is what the biblical wife that God designed, that's what she looks like, and she's pretty awesome and we had the husbands that go out and work. God's design was a 1950s ad campaign? How convenient. Again, I think her history is shaky. 
The 1950s image we're all familiar with of the man breadwinner and wife at home was the reality only for a small percentage of the population for a small fraction of our time on Earth. I don't know if Taylor just lacks media literacy or if she's indulging in wishful thinking. I'm gonna get so much hate for saying this, but I'm sorry, that looks like an absolute dream to me. When Taylor says that looks like an absolute dream, she shows a picture of a row of women at a hair salon. I don't hate her for saying that. If she wants to be a stay-at-home wife or mother, that's her business, but I do have a problem with her trying to pretend that that was a norm and something we should be striving to return to. This all happened because with the feminist movement, so many women entered the workplace, all on top of still taking care of the responsibilities at home. So now we do both things. Studies do show that despite women's increased earnings, they still do the majority of housework and childcare. But that was it. The problem with dating is that men are scared of women and that is because of feminism. Specifically, it's because feminism caused casual sex, gender roles no longer being strictly defined or adhered to, and we no longer have wives at home while the men go out to make money. And that somehow ties into men being afraid of women. I don't understand how we got here, but it's okay. Taylor can fix it. The problem solver here would be for women to start becoming more like women again. Women need to start becoming more feminine again. Valuing who they get into bed with, valuing their bodies and what they choose to wear and how they portray themselves online. I think women need to start valuing children and caring about the next generation more than they do of being a boss babe because the feminist movement is not working in favor of women. Women are unhappy. Women's happiness has been declining and we are talking about a movement that was for women. I really appreciate how her graph goes from 1970 to 2000, and it ends with happiness trending upward. Very scientific. And as for men, I think men need to start spending more time in the word of God and finding out what God says about you and who God created you to be and stand firm in that. You were created to lead and to be confident in your ability to lead. Men were created to be leaders. I think the media knows that. I think the government knows that. And they know if they can make the man weak, they make the families weak. And then they have more control over us. They don't want the family unit and they don't want men know who you were created to be. That was an abrupt edit. I do appreciate how Taylor says feminism is a movement against men, but then she goes on to shame men. If you are a man watching this, you were created to be masculine. And girls like that. We are looking for that. Women are attracted to men that are strong physically, mentally, and spiritually. That is how we are designed. If you walk in that, you are going to stand out so much because there's just not that many men out there anymore. So if a man doesn't fit what Taylor thinks men should be, he's no longer a man? Why does Taylor think she gets to make that judgment? We have an epidemic of people who do not know who they are and who they are created to be. And it's a shame. Women and men are created for different roles, but we are equal in the eyes of God. And you will be the happiest that you've ever been when you choose to walk in the design and order that God created us and this world to be in. I guess it hasn't occurred to Taylor that maybe God allowed for some variety beyond strict definitions of what it means to be a man or woman. That was pretty much it for the video, but I want to return to my earlier question. How entitled can you be? Taylor opened her video with the following story and I have some thoughts. If you didn't already know, I am in fact five foot and I'm also in fact a woman. And I don't know why it's so looked down upon other women to be saying this right now, but sometimes I need help from a man. I am also a woman and I'm five two and sometimes I need help as well. There's nothing wrong or shameful in admitting that. The weird part is specifying that you need that help from a man. I was at the airport a while ago and I had a suitcase that was bigger than me. I was going on a really long trip and I feared going to baggage claim and having to get this suitcase off of the baggage claim carousel because I honestly didn't think I was gonna be able to pick it up. And I was surrounded by a bunch of men and I thought surely at least one of them was gonna try to help me. And here my bag comes and here I go trying to pick this bag up. And I struggled so hard, you guys. I made a fool out of myself trying to pick this bag up and not one of these men around me offered to help me. Not one of them asked to help, not one of them asked which bag is yours. And guess what? I don't blame them at all. In the absolute slightest, I don't blame them. It kind of seems like she does blame men since she felt the need to tell us the story, but this leads to the conclusion that chivalry is dead and women killed it and I just, we all need help sometimes. But why would you assume someone will be there to help you? Why would you pack a bag too heavy for you to lift? Maybe a second bag wasn't an option for some reason, but you, you can't be surprised that people are reluctant to touch someone else's luggage at the airport. I'm not saying that people should never offer to help someone out, but that's a strange expectation to put on men and you should be grateful for assistance, not expect it. 
And that is Taylor Alicia. Just as bad as Girl Defined, but at least she doesn't sell PDFs and courses. Yet. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.